thank you, Ryan, for giving us some information on some of the commanding officers and stuff like that on of during the Battle of Okinawa or Iceberg. Now, for me, I got the rest. Some problems that resided during the battle was the fact that this island was massive. It was the biggest of the Ryukyu Islands, and the USA didn't know how many people could be there to defend it, so that's scary already. But that's not it. Only 350 miles away is the island of Japan. If you don't understand, Japan being 350 miles away could mean that they could send reinforcements pretty fast. It's still pretty far away, but if the U.S. doesn't defeat the people of Okinawa fast, then they're basically in trouble. So their plan was to overwhelm the Japanese. They did this by um, with a massive preliminary bombardment and the largest amphibious landing conducted by the U.S. during the Pacific War. One thing is that with the largest amphibious landing, the fact was to take them out fast, of course, but there could be a lot of catastrophes involved with it. So, to counterattack this, the Japanese thought they'd use their battleship Yamato and 350 kamikaze planes. Their, basically, their plan was to weaken our, our naval force with uh, the kamikaze plan and swiftly take the battleships out with Yama Yamato. So what is Yamato? Well, it's the biggest battleship of its time. It, But it may have been the biggest battleship of its time, but it basically did nothing in this battle. What do you mean it did nothing, you may be asking? After one day, the counterattack started April 6th. It was destroyed. So, from April 6th to April 7th, it was destroyed. The biggest battleship in history at that time, basically. That's crazy to think about. How much power could this thing have? It could probably tank so many hits, but because of how massive it was, it made it so easy for the Mitchers, uh, Mitchers carrier base planes to hit. Just think about it. On April 1st, the war, this battle started. So it took seven days, including the first and the last, to sink it. When it sank, it concluded the all big gun battleship era of naval war. Though this happened in that time, it was still killed, considered one of the bloodiest wars of the Pacific Ocean, Pacific War. The aftermath of it was 12,000 Allied lives uh, were lost, as well as 100,000 Japanese lives were taken. There were 50,000 Allied casualties, and at least 100,000 civilians were either killed in combat or ordered to commit suicide by the Japanese government. What a terrible thing to do, you may be thinking. A lot of these Japanese deaths were caused by suicides, whether it was kamikaze attacks or just a ritual suicide. They just didn't want to be captured because that's what their culture told them to never do. Never surrender. That isn't all, though. One of the most messed up things I've ever read was this. They forced a 15-year-old boy from Okinawa to kill his mother. In the future, that boy recalled what happened and said, We try to use rope at first, but in the end, we hit her over the head with stones. I was crying as I did it, and she was crying too. To have the nerve to make someone kill their own mother is mind-boggling. I mean, we aren't really supposed to ask you questions like me as a person right now, but if you were about to die like someone's about to shoot you, but the only way for you to survive was to kill your own mother was you. I know I wouldn't just because I wouldn't have the heart to. Some conditions during the battle was days of rain. There were continuous days of rain causing for these muddy, muddy lands, making things so hard to travel by and making people more tired. 
There was also forests and mountainous ranges. The forests and mountainous ranges gave the Okinawan people or the Japanese um, forces a better uh, advantage because they know this land so well. In the end, the Allied forces did win. And it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was a big deal. What I mean by it wasn't that big of a deal was the fact that the U.S. or the Allied forces didn't lose as many men as the Japanese. One thing I gotta say is that I have respect for these Japanese people. The Japanese laid out everything they could just for their country. No matter what, they would not go down without fighting. They were there to serve their emperor, and I'm sure they made the people of Japan proud. If they weren't respected after death, or even just respected if they came home, then I don't know what's wrong with them. Another thing is with the nuclear bombs and stuff like that. There was really no reason for any of these battles to happen, any of the battles of the Solomon Islands. You may be wondering why. Well, we just decided to nuke them in the end. If we were to attack the Japanese straight on, then maybe we would have came to a decision faster and more lives would have been, or more people would have been alive. Even Truman said that there was an alternative to, to the ground invasion and that was to threaten them with the newly developed atom bomb. He said, and I quote, Our moral position would be better if we gave them a specific warning of the bomb. So instead of battling all these islands, just taking them over, island hopping, we could have just told them, and if they didn't stop, then we would drop the bomb on them. So many people could have been alive because of this. And I just want to thank you for being here with me today. I hope you all are doing great. And yeah, peace out.